This screencast will cover mass to mass stoichiometry and percent yield. We're going to get all the way from grams of a compound A all the way over here to grams of a new compound B. So our problem says how many grams of barium hydroxide are precipitated from 14.5 grams of sodium hydroxide? So let's start off with 14.5 grams of sodium hydroxide as unknown. I like to put that over one so I don't accidentally put something else in the denominator. I'm going to bring down my units, grams of sodium hydroxide. And I want to get from grams of sodium hydroxide to moles of sodium hydroxide. That's my compound A. To get to moles of sodium hydroxide, I need to know the molar mass of sodium hydroxide from the periodic table. So I'm going to add up the molar masses of sodium atom, oxygen, and hydrogen. If I add those up, I get a total mass of 39.9969 grams per mole, or grams are in every one mole. So the 39.9969 is the grams that are in every one mole of sodium hydroxide. Grams of sodium hydroxide cancel out in the numerator and denominator. And now I'm going to bring down moles of sodium hydroxide. Now that I've gotten to moles of A, I'm prepared to convert to the new compound B. To get to moles of B, I'm going to need the coefficients from the balanced equation, that mole ratio from the balanced equation. So I want to get over to compound B, which is barium hydroxide. So I want to get from moles of sodium hydroxide over into the compound I want to be in, barium hydroxide. And to do that, I need the coefficients from the balanced equation. So there's an assumed 1 in front of barium hydroxide and a coefficient of 2 in front of sodium hydroxide. Bring down moles of barium hydroxide. And once I'm in moles of barium hydroxide, I want to convert to grams of barium hydroxide. And again, I'm going to need its molar mass, the number of moles, or excuse me, the number of grams that are in one mole of barium hydroxide. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate its molar mass. So I get barium's molar mass. I'm going to do hydroxide together. There's two of the hydroxide polyatomic ions. So I can add the mass of oxygen and hydrogen together. That's about 17, double that, 34. And then I'm going to add that 34 to the 137 to get a total for barium hydroxide of 171.3408 grams in every one mole. In one mole of barium hydroxide, there's 171.3408 grams. Now I'm just going to multiply everything the numerator. And divide by everything in the denominator. That denominator really needs parentheses if you're going to do this calculation all at once. Lots of people like to put in the numerator too, just to be sure. And you should get 31.1 grams of, and our units remaining are grams of barium hydroxide are produced. We'll do another mass to mass example. This time it says you need to precipitate out 10.7 grams of barium hydroxide. So here barium hydroxide is our compound A. And we're trying to figure out how many grams of sodium hydroxide are needed. So here we're going to get from grams of barium hydroxide to moles of barium hydroxide first. Write out the known, and it's two part units over one. Bring down grams of barium hydroxide, 
can get to moles. And you're going to need some molar mass, but we just calculated that. That was the 171. We can use it from the last problem. Now we want to get rid of moles of barium hydroxide. Here's why it's so important to have that two-part unit so that you can really see where you're going. Oh, we're going to moles but of our new compound, of our desired sodium hydroxide. What's the mole to mole ratio? Two here, two presumed one. Two moles of sodium hydroxide for every one mole of barium hydroxide that's produced. Bring down the moles of sodium hydroxide because we have one last step here to get to grams. Of sodium hydroxide. And we need the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, but we found that in that last problem 39.9969 grams are in every one mole. And then we just need to again multiply everything that's in the numerator. We're just multiplying fractions here to divide by the 171. That molar mass of barium hydroxide. And we should get a final answer of 5 grams of sodium hydroxide, or what you need for this reaction. Lots of times we're interested in calculating the percent yield of a reaction because reactions often do not make as much product as we would think or hope that they do or calculate that they do. So there's an amount we actually make in lab versus what we predicted, what we should have made in lab. So there's lots of places where product can be lost throughout experiments and calculating percent yield can accommodate for just how much was lost gives you an understanding of that. So we're going to calculate percent yield here. We're going to need that equation. Percent yield was what was actually produced in the lab versus what was theoretically calculated times 100%. And that theoretical means from straight calculations, from stoichiometry calculations. It says in a reaction to produce nitrogen, nitric acid, 60 grams of gaseous nitrogen dioxide was reacted with aqueous liquid water. 44.2 grams of nitric acid was generated, and let's read was actually generated. So let's see where we're headed here with our percent yield equation. 44.2 grams of nitric acid. Do we see the formula of an acid up here? Starts with hydrogen. It wasn't water. It's HNO3 is our nitric acid. We don't know how much we could actually have made. We know we had 60 grams of nitrogen dioxide, NO2. So we started off with 60 grams of NO2. We're not sure how much nitric acid that should have given us, but we can calculate that from stoichiometry. So we can bring down grams of nitrogen dioxide and first get to moles of NO2. Now we'll need its molar mass. So we'll need an N. And two oxygen. So when we add up that 14.007, 31.998, we get a molar mass of 46.005 grams of NO2 are in every mole, grams per mole. 
We're going to bring down moles of nitrogen dioxide. And here's where we're going to switch with our mole ratio. We want to know how much nitric acid we should have been able to produce with our nitrogen dioxide. So let's look at the ratio. For every three moles of nitrogen dioxide that go into our reaction, two moles of nitric acid should be produced from it. Bring down moles of nitric acid. We want to get to grams of nitric acid. So in every one mole of nitric acid, we need to know that molar mass of nitric acid. And we'll have three oxygens. And when we add these all up, the hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen, we get a molar mass for nitric acid of 63.00 grams per mole. 63.011, rather, grams are in every one mole of nitric acid. So we'll multiply everything in the numerator, divide by that denominator, put it in parentheses, put them both. That is a sure bet. And we get 54.8 grams of nitric acid could have been produced in theory if there were no losses from our 60 grams of NO2. So the idea is 60 grams of NO2 makes 54.8 grams of nitric acid, but only in theory, only if everything were perfect. In reality, we only made 44.2 grams of nitric acid. Divide by the actual 54.8 grams of nitric acid. The two-part unit is always so important because at this step, we can make sure that we are, in fact, dividing two things that are the same compound. We're dividing masses of the same compound because we kept that unit along the way. We can be sure it cancels out. And when we do that final calculation, what do we get for percent yield? But about 80%, 80.7% for our final percent yield.